Good morning, it is Monday morning. So, I think I told you guys, basically we just have to go down and pick up this load, then we're gonna come back to the house to sit till Wednesday, because we can't drop it until Wednesday. Uh, because it's gonna be a crane unload. It's supposed to be like a 20 foot container that weighs like 42,000 pounds. And uh, so we got just, we got about an hour to run down to Alachua. Alachua, Florida, and uh, we'll just come right back. We are bringing our dispatcher with us today. All right, we got our dispatcher Mason in the truck today. Huh? Finally, huh? I'm gonna show him the ropes. This load doesn't have to be tarped, but I'm gonna make them tarp it just to uh, just to show him why we don't like to tarp. Like I said, it's supposed to be a 90 or a, a 20 foot uh, high cube container. Um, Lita's staying at the house. She still has to find us a leveling rod. We went by Rainey's on the way home from Florida. Rainey's website said that they had it in stock. We went to Rainey's and man, somebody lost a bunch of trash. And they didn't have it in stock. So she's got to find that. I've got a weird vibration that feels like it's coming maybe from my drivetrain. After 65, if, I, if like if I go faster than 65 and then I let off the throttle, there's like a weird, there's like a weird vibration that feels like it's coming from like the transmission area. So I got under there and I was pushing and pulling on the drive shaft and our uh, carrier bearing feels like it might have some play in it. So. I'm gonna have her pick up a carrier bearing and then I did pre-trip this morning and we have a uh, a brake chamber leaking on the trailer so I'm going to send her she's gonna get the leveling rod the brake chamber the carrier bearing I'm probably not gonna have time to do today but I definitely have to change out that brake chamber since we only have to shoot down the road about an hour I'm gonna shoot we're gonna shoot down there we'll grab that Hopefully by the time we get back, Lita's got all the parts and then uh, I can swap out that leveling rod. Our leveling rod has these two little rubber things on the end and those rubber things keep ripping. You can also pick up where it's got a metal ring on the end that you run the bolt through. So I told her to look for that. Hopefully she can find that kind. If not, we'll just have to go back with the rubber kind for now. Rainey's had the metal kind. That's why we wanted to go to Rainey's, but I don't know. It is what it is. Um, after my brother gets off the road, Mason's probably going to want to pick up another semi truck. I don't think you want to mess with hot shots, huh? Yeah, probably not. Yeah, so. Uh, only flatbed or step decks. Yeah, only fl flatbed step yeah. deck work. Yeah, because he doesn't have uh, experience in reefer or any of that. So he'd rather only do flatbed or step deck. So if you're interested in that, hit us up. I'll give you Mason's information. Um, what else is going on? I feel like there was something else. Brake chamber, uh, carrier bearing, leveling rod. Pick this up today, we drop it Wednesday. My brother's on his way to Tennessee to pick up to go to Tennessee too. This goes to uh, Memphis, ours goes to Memphis, Tennessee. So that's gonna put us back over by Arkansas so we can uh, kind of see what Arkansas is doing again. Um, I don't think anywhere is doing really good, to be completely honest with you. I think it's all bad. Um, but who knows? I think I might have a fix for that. It's just gonna take some time to uh, find what I wanna do. I'll have to uh, show you guys when we find something, when I when I find what I want, we'll say. And uh, I think that's gonna help going into some dead areas and dealing with some other things that hopefully you guys will see soon. Honestly, you'd see it right now if the truck didn't break down. I'd just go out and get whatever I wanted. But since we just spent 15 grand on the truck, I'm not trying to blow my whole savings. So, Anyways, headed to Alachua. We'll see you guys there.
It's supposed to be uh, 38,000 pounds. So, like I said, we'll take this to the house. Probably leave out first thing in the morning. I don't know if you can hear that brake chamber leaking. No word back from Lita yet, so I don't know if she found one. I mean, obviously, we're going to have to get one no matter what. No matter what it costs. So, close this toolbox up. Ugh. Oh, forgot the rubber band. Got to twist it. And then we can close it. Alright, All right, we're good to go. Evidently, these were probably moved down for the hurricane. And obviously they've got all that situated, so we should be good to go. Let's go, Mason. back at the house now Lita got us a brake chamber she got us two leveling rods these rods are nice because they don't have that rubber like the other I'll show you when I guess when I take it off it's basically just a rod that's been cut then there's a rubber cap that goes on and then everything's made of rubber and then you run the bolt through like a rubber piece so she got two of these just in case something happens. I don't know. If something happens to one of these, honestly, we are in some trouble. So, anyways, that's the deal. Let me uh, get this brake chamber on. Here, I'll show you guys the kind of noise it was making. It's uh, it's where you put the uh, like the cage bolt in. There's air coming out of out of that spot. And I think there's a diaphragm in there. <laughs> so. That's why we need a new one. Whee! All right. New brake chambers in. It's crazy uh, because, I, you know what? I can actually see when I bought those because I just sent, I just sent Lita a picture um, so she would get the right one. I think she ended up getting them all from, 
Where did she get them from? There's like a Volvo place. So I bought those September 9th, 2021, and obviously I didn't put them on on September 9th. They had to be shipped, and then I waited till I got home and had time. So that thing's not even a year old. I wonder why that thing went bad. Um, we have the new leveling valve on. So this is how the uh, old leveling valve was, is you have this rod, then you have these rubber ends on each side. And what's happening, and it's probably my fault, maybe you're supposed to shove this rod all the way into the end, but I would use this to adjust the height. They say to have the top of your drives level with your frame. I dumped the airbags just to make sure the rod wasn't gonna hit something. That's why it's not up. But, so I would pull this out and then tighten this up until the ride height was right. But what's ha what was happening was it was ripping the bottom of this off just like this. So I glued it on there. I guess that glue did pretty good. The only thing with this new rod is it's twisted. This one end from the other was twisted. They're, they're, it's like the rod is purposely bent. So it's probably not actually for my truck. Something tells me they gave me one for a different truck but you can see like this is kind of cocked this way and that one down there is kind of cocked that way so i'll have to keep an eye on that i actually bent that bracket down there on the bottom so it wouldn't be as bad hoping that would help i don't know and then i've changed up how i mount the suron and i put these buckles in there hook on the peg so i wouldn't have to strap it anymore because it's kind of a nightmare strapping and unstrapping it last time i was out i could not get this thing to not fall over so i came up with these turnbuckle ideas to hook onto the foot pegs and i put that piece of aluminum across and we didn't have me and mason didn't have the suron on here obviously when we went down to florida and one of the turnbuckles fell out so lita had to go grab another turnbuckle so that's a mess I uh, cut a bunch of my 4x4s at an angle, so when we do coils, a lot of places tell you to have them cut at an angle. They've never turned me away, but I figured while I was home and had the time, I went ahead and... I think I cut four of the sh small ones, and then four of the long ones. Oh, and then I put them on my ramps here, so it wouldn't take up deck space either, so there's that. Let me walk around this other side. I'm just uh, mounting the bike up, getting ready to leave tomorrow. I figured you guys, I'd show you guys uh, how I've got the bike mounted now. Like I said, I put that aluminum. That piece of aluminum came because this 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 uh, Harbor Freight motorcycle kit comes with like a little, I don't know, like a little three inch ramp because this is supposed to go into the ball of like your pickup truck or your minivan or whatever, and you can load your motorcycle up on that. So I just took and cut that little piece up and, and got this piece out of it. And then I just went up to Tractor Supply and bought some turnbuckles. Um, the turnbuckles that they had in stock only had the two eyelets. So I had to buy a hook. There's a hook piece that I hooked onto the pegs here. Um, this one could probably stand to be tightened a little bit more, I guess. But that's pretty much it, you know. This is uh, patent pending, by the way, so don't don't be stealing my ideas. For five hundred dollars, I'll uh, I'll let you use this idea, and then I won't sue you. Yeah, but that's pretty much it. And then it comes with uh, these little you put these little rods through here, just as like a, a last ditch effort failure safe where if any everything fails it'll keep this tire locked in there and honestly the last time out it's not that i had to use it but the bike was definitely leaning over and the tires were kind of cocked inside of here maybe that kept it from coming up but and then i just throw my uh kryptonite u-lock so it locks the bike to this as well um there's another spot up front Honestly, I don't mess with it because if the back tire can't hold it on, then 
something bad's happening but you can see like uh how i used to run my straps i've kind of rubbed off some of the powder coating here and there and a couple of other little places and it, it was just a nightmare it was just a nightmare so i don't know it wasn't bad until last time we went out last time we just went out though man it was like it was a struggle i i, I don't know why i don't know why it wouldn't stay um strap down for some reason i actually got this idea there's a, a company that sells um a much fancier setup than this but you bolt it like to the bottom of your pickup truck or your trailer and it's got these little spring-loaded deals that are basically doing what i'm doing and i almost bought it, it was like 250 dollars but the more and more i looked i looked at it since my tires are sunk down in this, there wouldn't have been enough adjustment room. So I ultimately just went with this. I mean, it would be great for your motorcycle um, if it was flat on a trailer or in the back of your pickup truck. But since obviously the tires are sunk down, I don't know, maybe I could have mounted it up underneath of it somehow. But, you know, like I said, for 250 bucks, I wasn't willing to take the uh, take the chance of it not working so yeah that's pretty much it We should be in Memphis. Uh, Mason's up, looking for another load. Uh, my brother took a load. Where's Chris going? He's on his way to Tennessee as well. Clarksville, Tennessee or something like that. And I think Mason found him another load going to north of Pittsburgh. Some more coils. Lots of coils being moved right now. Oh, York, Pennsylvania? No, York's York's east of uh, Pittsburgh, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, it's slow. Mason said it was above Pittsburgh. I don't know, but he we called on another load that was going to Ohio that was uh, coils as well. But they said they wouldn't put the coils on a step deck, which doesn't make any sense. Like, coils can go on a step deck. And honestly, to me, it's it's more safe to go on a step deck because if the coil I mean especially if it's loaded suicide uh, meaning the coil if it broke loose it would roll towards you that's called suicide if it's loaded sideways then it's called homicide because it can go to either side kill the, the people to the other side and then there's eye to the sky which is basically the opening of the, the hole of the coil 
faces towards the sky. Those are usually loaded on a pallet. Those are my favorite ways to load them. And then suicide. Honestly, I don't think we've ever done a homicide coil. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why you would even load them like that. But yeah, anyways, yeah, they wouldn't put it on a step deck, which like I said, seems more safe to me because if it comes loose, it's gotta hit that step. Now, granted it's gonna destroy the trailer, but it's gonna slow it down or at least stop it from killing you. So, I don't know. I like I like step deck coil. Uh, running it on a flatbed, I, I don't know, just, just seems super scary to me. I mean, obviously, you need to have your securement right, but at the same time, it's like, it's, it's still, it's just a scary thing, so. Anyways, he's going to Pennsylvania. Mason said it seems like the Northeast is doing really good, but I don't think he takes into account the nightmare of the traffic and the uh, toll roads, and I think they got some snow up there, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's starting to snow. Today's the day after uh, Halloween. Uh, we had our record turnout this year, didn't we? There's a there's a can am place in Tifton now. We had five trick or treaters this year. Five. Amazing. I mean, it's a lot for our neighborhood. I mean, we've got a lot of like richy neighborhoods that usually all the parents take their kids to the richy neighborhoods. Which I mean, I guess I can understand that. Like. I'm not sure how many people in my neighborhood would actually pass out candy. No, people go to the mall. Oh, is it the mall? Yeah. Trunk or treat. Yeah. And the mall. And then the rich neighborhoods. And I guess if I was a parent, I wouldn't like take them to some random uh, neighborhood. You know? Well, Unless you lived in that neighborhood. And we don't have that many kids in our neighborhood. Yeah, but it was different times back then. Oh, there were still weirdos. I know there was still weirdos, but I think more people passed out candy back then. Like you could hit something like our neighborhood back when we grew up and 99% of the houses were passing out candy. Like I remember as a kid being in the station wagon and we used our pillowcases and we would hit houses and we'd fill up our pillowcases and dump them in the car and then go back out man we had so much candy it was crazy my mom gets like 20 plus trick-or-treaters at her house your mom lives in a richie no, neighborhood it's not rich no it's not a rich neighborhood are there rich neighborhoods around yeah yeah there's other neighborhoods you can go to to get like the big candy bars but her neighborhood is just a good trick-or-treat i mean if when kids come to our house on Halloween, we're like, grab you a handful. Yeah. You know, we're not like, oh, here's one piece of candy. We're like, no, like, you will probably be the only kid coming to our house tonight. Take this bowl of candy. Please take some candy. So, we bought one bag of candy this year. Um, and we took it with us. I ate a bunch before Halloween, passed out some candy, and then we took it with us. So, I don't know. We didn't dress up. Honestly, I forgot it was Halloween. Yeah. Like, I think I got out of the shower and you're like, we had five trick-or-treaters. I'm like, yeah. And then it dawned on me, oh yeah, today's Halloween. Yeah. So. Dress the dogs up. Yeah, we dressed the dogs up. Uh, absolutely adorable. Uh, let's see, what else? I mean, we got the brake chamber fixed. We got the leveling rod on. We, I didn't do the uh, carrier bearing because there's a lot more to that than what I thought it would be. Um, and I was afraid since we have this load on us, you know, obviously I wouldn't get it fixed. My truck would be halfway apart. There's a bearing that you kind of have to pull, press off. I mean, you can press it off. I watched a YouTube video, people cut them off and then you can press them on. Um, but boy, was that this load saying that we couldn't drop till Wednesday was absolutely.
absolutely perfect for us. Yeah. Because had we picked this up and that brake chamber been bad, that would have been bad. It would have been a nightmare. Plus, they basically they paid us two hundred fifty dollars uh, to deliver it the next day, which which kind of sucks. But getting good pay and freight out of South Georgia sucks anyways. So this was good paying. And they're like, ah, oh, take another day and we'll give you another 250. And I was like, look, I could go to the house. Now, if I was out across the country and they wanted me to take another day, I'd be like, yeah, absolutely not. I'm not gonna sit in a truck stop for 250 bucks. But this all worked out. The 250 bucks basically paid for all of our parts. Plus it gave me time to fix everything. Yeah. Why that brake chamber went bad, I have no idea. I mean, we had just, I had just put all new brake chambers on here last year, which is, is crazy. Like, I wasn't even having problems with the brake chambers. I just knew that brake chambers could be a problem. So I wanted, I wanted to jump on the grenade and get it done, you know what I mean? So, I don't know. I don't know why it went bad. Right there where you put the uh, bolt in, the cage bolt, air was blowing out of that. And I, there's like a diaphragm in there that obviously something happened to the diaphragm because it was blowing the air out of that bolt. I don't know. Anyways, we are going to white knuckle it all the way there. Try to get there tonight, drop this thing first thing in the morning. I guess they're gonna have a crane unload. They said we couldn't load it today because it was gonna be crane loaded. And then we get there and then they put it on with a forklift. It's like, I don't think these brokers know what's going on. Yeah, Mason said it was one of those container forklift yeah, things. Yeah, it was a massive forklift that has yeah. the things that like lock into the top. Yeah. So, I don't know. Anyways, see you guys. Then take the first left. Holy smokes. Nobody well, we said anything about the holes, man. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Golly. We have stopped. Let me see where we're at. Hold on, girls. Hey, this isn't grass. These are rocks. Neve, ne, Navoa? Navo. N A U V O O. Uh, at a little uh, truck stop. We have to do a 30 minute break. Then I think we have about uh, three more hours of drive time left to drop this. Uh, Mason has found us another load going back to Florida. So we'll be back at home again for this weekend um, probably gonna be a day early um, it was a good pay and load there wasn't much on the board plus we're having an issue with that vibration it feels like that vibration is um, getting worse and look at this come here girls this container thing is super heavy on one side so it's like completely bending the trailer on this side. I don't know if you guys can see that on this trailer, but all the uh, all the weight is on this side of this container. Come here, girls. 
So it's pushing on this side. So that that's uh that's crazy which which is making this tire closer to the trailer here so every time we hit a big bump this tire is is touching this so what i'm going to do when i go home is i'm going to move the leveling valve from the rear axle to this axle because what happens when we have a really heavy load is it kind of bends this trailer down i've noticed it when we do like 45,000 pounds of coil or or whatever it is that's super heavy that mostly goes up towards the front it kind of bows the trailer down and the leveling valve set on this for this tire to be at this distance but it, there's so much weight up there that it pushes down on those airbags and the leveling valve doesn't know to increase the air to push the trailer up on the front so I'm gonna move that to the front and obviously I'm gonna try that carrier bearing hold on girls this way and then um, I hope it's that carrier bearing. I think it is. I think it's got some slop in it. Um, I think what's happened is when they put my clutch in, I think they disconnected the drive shaft. Not just this place, but all the places that have been working on my transmission. They disconnect the drive shaft from the transmission to pull the transmission back. And then all that weight is kind of pushing and pulling on that carrier bearing more than what it should be so uh here let's go over here girls back here by this garbage looks like they're burning a bunch of uh stuff back here so yeah we'll be going to uh supposed to be a load of uh pvc pipe picking up going to lakeland florida that'll put us home on thursday and then i'll just spend friday saturday sunday or whatever you know fixing the truck and my brother's kind of been like dang you're going home a bunch the way i look at it is with the rates as low as they are right now you want to make as much money as you can and drive the very least amount so i'm just going to just drive the truck enough to pay our bills and then hopefully when rates come back because there's no point in driving 700 miles a day six days a week in order to uh you're not going to become rich right now there just isn't enough money in the rates right now to really make it worth working long hours and putting a bunch of miles on your truck so do the bare minimum especially when you can't find like i said good paying loads it is what it is i'll go home like i said i'd rather go broke sitting at the house than i would sitting in a truck stop so anyways these girls need to go for a walk how you girls doing you guys look so good in your halloween outfits huh yeah do our 30 minute break here and then uh we'll see you down the road Oops. look at him it's like you can't stop me i'm the gingerbread man Damn. yeah dude
missed something. Bro, it's over with. It's okay, you can slow down. You can't overnight park at the place that enforces your parking. How does that make any sense? They have a massive lot here. Without representation is theft. 